Hello, it's Tom Donnell from the London Contemporary School of Piano. Now, playing the piano to me is not just about following some prescribed score that has been written down and as a musician you're a slave to everything the composer wrote down. I believe that it's really important when you play a musical instrument that you understand music a little bit on your own terms and that you move at your own pace and you try your own things with the music. A little bit of DIY music, you could call it but actually it means that you gain a deeper understanding as to how music works. So in that spirit, we're gonna improvise a bit on the famous Pachelbel's Kennen. Now this piece is originally in D major. So we'll stay faithful to the key. Now this piece of music is really based on a very simple chord progression, like so much of the music we listen to. And it's really important to understand how these chords create the emotions that we feel when we hear the music. And these emotions can be simply translated into numbers. Music is very mathematical after all. So let's look at the numbers for Pachelbel's Canon. I'll start with the left hand. We have number one, number five, six, three, four, one, four, five. Write them down on a piece of paper. That's all you need to know to play this piece. One, five, six, three, four, one, four, five. So really all Pachelbel has done with this piece has created a jam session on those numbers. Now, let's look at what chords that, that are produced from the scale then. We're in the key of D major. And you can do this in any key. You can do this with any scale that you know. Chord one, chord two, chord three, chord four, chord five, chord six, chord seven, chord one. And in the major scale, chords one, four and five, they're major. That means they sound bright. We hear this in all the music we listen to. And then there's chords two, three, and six. And then minor, they have a more expansive, nostalgic sound to them. And of course, when you dance between major and minor, you get beautiful chord progressions, like Pachelbel's Kennen. Perhaps you could create your own chord progressions. Just write down a bunch of numbers between one and seven. Particularly if you use numbers between one and six, it will always sound coherent. You cannot possibly be random. I could just randomly go one, two, four, five, three, six, two, three, one, five. It will all make sense because the scale is doing the work for us. Okay, back to Pachelbel. One, five, six, three, Side note for those of you who are more beginners to the piano and you're struggling in the key of D major, you could do this in C major. You just use the same system. One, five, six, three, and so on. So you can apply this to any scale that you're comfortable playing in. So back to D major. Let's do this a few times just to get the feel of it. create some melody with this. So let's return to the left hand. And I'm just going to run this left hand in the background while I talk about how I can improvise on this piece. So this piece is in the key of D major. Which means that any note in the D major scale will fit perfectly with this bass line. It doesn't matter whereabouts in the scale I start, it will work.
love about improvising too is I can play to the space I'm in a bit. I'm not restricted by the score. I can just feel inspired by the tones of this beautiful Blutner Grand Piano, which was built in 1910. I can just feel the ghosts in this instrument and the warmth of the tones. So I can play a bit at my own pace and respond to the music as I would like to. And it's still Pachelbel's canon and we can still recognise it. So a little bit more on the improvisation bit because I know a lot of people get stuck with that. Well, really, there's not that much improvisation going on in some senses. We're just in the scale of D major. I'm not playing in another key, otherwise it would sound... A little uncomfortable perhaps you could say. I'm just sticking to that scale. But I'm not playing the scale in a subscribed way where I just go up two octaves and down two octaves. I'm actually putting the scale into a musical context. This is a really powerful way for you to practice your scales. Just start on a starting point in the scale, move up, stop a bit, Take a breath, move down a bit, move up. It's a really good thing to practice, flowing inside the scale. Just to practice that for a bit. You can even do a little bit in the left hand to create passing notes. with little phrases of three notes. And most importantly, don't think about it too much. Don't expect it to be perfect. Being perfect is not the end goal here. Flow is more important. Continuity is far more important than perfection. Even if you were to slow down what I was just improvising, you'd find a few things that I could have done better. But that's not the point. The point is, the is, the, is keeping that continuous flow in the music. Which I'm going to try and do right now. Maybe sit down at your piano and jam with me. Have some fun. I have put together a special improvisation PDF summary and chord cheat sheet of these tips and tricks for those of you who wish to improve your creative piano playing. To receive your download, you can visit contemporaryschoolofpiano.com and ask us for the Stingray Music Series Pack and we will send you the material with our compliments.